Golden Black Live, you will not be watching just me by myself talk to myself, thank God. And, and uh, we've got a great show today. Will Miller off, off to the side, but Jerry Seasting, who is a busy man today, and, uh, uh, and we so appreciate uh, Jerry. Uh, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Uh, How you doing? This has got to be a highlight of your professional career to be on Golden Black Live, but we're, we're thankful that you are. Jerry needs no introduction, a Purdue Hall of Fame member, one of the great guards in Purdue history, played basketball uh, from 1976 to 79, played in the NCAA tournament for Purdue when it was hard to make the NCAA tournament. It's still hard to make it, but in 77, played in the Big Ten uh, championship team in 79. Jerry's day job uh, is an important one. Just uh, since uh, I think the 15th of January, I believe the date was, or was it the 19th, uh, uh, reconnected with the Minnesota Timberwolves. And if my reading is correct, you are in New Orleans today for a, a game tonight against the Pelicans. Yes, I am. I'm in the Big Easy. Uh, we play tonight. It'll be our uh, third game in four nights. So uh, we're on a little road trip here and uh, trying to get a win. We've got a lot of a lot of guys hurt. Uh, we've actually got our top six, and I'll repeat that, our top six guards are going to be out tonight. So that includes going down to our best D-League player. So uh, we, we've got our hands full right now with all these injuries. I've never, I've never seen a team with this many guards out. I, yeah, that's amazing, and I would I would ask if you could still suit up. You probably could. Uh, maybe maybe uh, Ryan could too as well. Your head the head coach uh, Ryan Saunders. Uh, that's an amazing thing. Is it's been uh, and, and I haven't followed it obviously as closely as I should. It's just been all. Uh, I mean, if you had a couple of these injuries here since you, you went on this road trip. Well, yeah, Jared Bayless, uh, yeah. who was the fifth guard in, in minutes played on the team, actually had done a pretty good job uh, holding the fort down for about a week and a half, and now he's got a little foot injury himself. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I mean, we've got Robert Covington, yeah. Tyus Jones, uh, Jeff Teague, and uh, who's the other? Oh, yeah, Derek Gross, former <laughs> All-Star. Uh, those guys have all been out, and yeah. uh, it just it just makes it uh, very, very very difficult right now but the guys are playing hard and uh hopefully we can eke out one tonight yeah what do you what do you try to do in this situation i mean when you when you're down that you know you can't hide in the nba it's 24 second clock uh, it's the world's greatest athletes uh, are on the court uh do you try to slow tempo do you i mean do you, or how do you, what do you from a coaching staff standpoint what do you try to get done when you're in such a almost a catastrophic situation in terms of personnel yeah, it, it's difficult to slow the tempo down. Uh, we're playing a team that's third in scoring in the NBA tonight. They average about 116, but they give up 115. Yeah. So we actually want to try to push the ball and try to get some early looks. Um, so we, you know, we're, it's going to be difficult to execute our half court a lot of times uh, with with the guards out, and it's also going to be hard to push the ball with your guards out. But uh, we, we want to get it up and, and at least give ourselves uh, as many seconds as we can to try to find a good shot. So we won't really slow the tempo down. Uh, their their transition defense is not that good. So a lot's going to be predicated our offense on our defense. We can get some stops and get the ball in the open court. Um, maybe we'll have some guys that can create stuff uh, before their defense gets set. What, what has it been like for you, you know, to come back into a situation? And, of course, you're kind of, as I understand, kind of serving – as uh, and Ryan Saunders is is an in interim, but kind of as a mentor, so to speak. I mean, maybe maybe because that's a a little bit of an age thing, but also your experience. How's that? And, and obviously, you worked for Ryan's dad uh, for many years. How has that uh, experience been like for you? Well, it's been good. Uh, Ryan is you know he's in a tough situation, uh, not only with all the injuries, but to take over in midseason right. like he's done. And uh, I've known Ryan since, uh, and I'm going to give my age away now, since he was about eight years old. Yeah. And uh, he was playing AAU basketball with my sons and Mikhail's sons, Randy Whitman's sons up in Minnesota. Uh, but he called me uh, when he took over and said, you know, I, I'm looking for somebody that I that I know uh, that's been here before, and and uh, so it was it was hard. I was I was just kind of enjoying things out in Phoenix during the winter, and then uh, I get to Minnesota and, uh, and get this uh, 20 below, uh, yeah. 30 below, uh, you know, polar vortex coming down. But it's been good because uh, you know I, I like I like the game. Um, this is something that kind of came out of the blue, but um, you know I, I think I got half a season left in me anyway, and and just uh, to work with them and just try to. 
help him as much as I can. Uh, like I said, he's doing a good job for somebody thrust in his situation. And um, I'm, it's my third time back with the Timberwolves. Yeah. So, um, so it's, it's been kind of fun. So at least you know those winners. And, of course, having grown up in Martinsville, it's, it's not exactly the, uh, the, uh, the French Riviera down there in terms of that. But it has been, you're right, you, you hit it right at the right time because it, we had the, probably the worst weather here in, in the last uh, couple decades, even in Indiana, 20 below zero last week as well. You know, you look at, the, um, uh, and we were talking, I don't know how much you've seen your alma mater play this year and how much you've seen Purdue play, but I was curious to, you know, Matt Painter's team is, uh, is doing very well, but up now to 15th rank, they've won seven games in a row. Uh, have you had a chance to see much of the Boilermakers? Yeah, I always follow them. Uh, you know, they had a great year last year, and then uh, I, I was, by not working early in the season, I was able to see some of those early games. And, you know, they, they had three or four really tough losses where basically to me it looked like they just kind of ran out of gas in the last three or four minutes. Yeah. Um, and and what what Matt's been able to do is integrate some of these younger guys and develop them. Uh, I, don't, I don't communicate that much with Matt, uh, but I, I have a few times this year. And... Uh, you know, I, I just had the feeling that if if he started playing those guys, uh, you know, it'd give them a little more depth, and and they they were going to need that for the Big Ten season, and and that's kind of exactly how things have turned out. He's done a great job of, uh, you know, getting Williams and Wheeler and and Hunter uh, in there a little bit, and so uh, you know they're a little more fresh and can able to close out some games. I mean that game they had uh, a week ago or so against Michigan State at home, uh, they probably lost that game earlier in the year because yeah. uh, they wouldn't have been able to regroup, but. Uh, by those other guys burning some minutes and playing well in the minutes that they're out there, uh, you know they were able to stifle that run that Michigan State made at the end of the game and uh, held on for the victory. So they, 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 he's doing a great job, and the team has uh, really, really come together. I mean, it, they look like they're almost impossible to beat at home right now. Yeah, they'll play Nebraska tomorrow night at 8:30. Um, I wanted to ask you about, and I don't know, and I don't even know if I'm if I'm putting you in a bad position because you're now in the league again, but. Uh, Wanted to ask you about Carson Edwards and what you see from him and what you see as his potential and, and you know, what kind of guy can he if, be at the professional level, whether it be at the NBA or, or uh, potentially overseas. Depends where, where things shake out for him. What do you, what do you see in him? Well, he, he's a player that, um, number one, he, he's, a, he's a very good all-around player. Um, you know what what position he translates into the NBA. Uh, you know can be argued is he a point guard? Probably not. Is he a combo guard? Yeah, he he can shoot the ball. He can play defense. He plays tremendously hard. Uh, you know, and and a lot of times in the NBA, uh, for a player like him, it just depends on what team he ends up with. Uh, to, you know how quickly maybe he can get on the court or yeah. be part of a rotation. So. Um, but he's a guy, I think, just by his passion for the game, just watching from afar um, and how hard he plays all the time, uh, you know, he'll, he'll figure it out. And, um, you know, if he, if he was two or three inches taller, I would say he, he's a can't-miss, probably NBA starter. Because of his size, uh, he's, he's going to have to figure it out a little bit his first year or two. But, uh, I mean, he's a, he's a tremendous college player, obviously, and, and uh, I, th- I think he's – just by who he is and his heart and uh, how hard he plays, uh, he'll, he'll figure out how to how to play professional basketball. You know, and I know, and obviously he he went out last year and, and, and got the evaluation by NBA scouts, and and you wouldn't have been privy to that information. But just watching him is, has he has he, is he a guy at into the league level needs to be able to play more with the ball in his hands if he's going to play the point, or you said he might be better suited as a combo guard anyway, even though he's you know maybe six uh, one uh, on a good day. Yeah, well, you know, the way the league is now, it's a, it's a lot different than it was, uh, you know, 25, 30, 35 years ago uh, where, you know, the guys were just kind of uh, locked in a certain position because of their size and what they do. You know, the game, teams play small a lot. They'll put three guards at a time, uh, you know, sometimes three guards and a small forward out on the floor at times. So in those type of situations, I think that's where, you know, he might be able to help a team um, – you know, just by being able to, to spread, be able to shoot the three-point shot, and then obviously uh, put the ball on the floor and drive, drive and kick. So he's got those skills. Uh, and, again, it's just a matter of getting with a team that, um, you know, is the right team that needs a guy that, that has his skill set. Um, you, you know, I, I really don't see him as a pure point guard, uh, but 
but he's he's such a good player, and and the three point shot is just such a huge part of the NBA these days. And he's got NBA three point range without question. Um, you know, I, I think it's just a matter of him adapting, figuring out the game, uh, of the little nuances, and for a coach uh, to be able to use them in the right way and have confidence. You're gonna go against a Boilermaker that has has uh, got his got his uh, his big contract here recently, and is. Uh, Though the Pelicans are struggling a little bit, but Etwan Moore, if you're going to give a scouting report on Etwan, and obviously you're going to be facing him tonight, uh, what do you see? And, 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 and having observed and been in the league, how, how has he ratcheted up his game uh, to a level where he's uh, getting a lot of time? Well, he, he's another guy that, you know, coming out of uh, college, uh, he was, you know, I think a lot of pro people and scouts viewed, well, uh, he may not make it, he may make it. Um, you know, is he a point guard? Is he an off guard? But but each one, again, uh, you know, and a lot of Purdue players are like this. They're just they're just smart players. They've been well coached. Uh, they they pay attention to detail and, and and play hard defense. That he's been able to really carve a niche for himself and get himself a good contract, like you said. I'm not sure he's going to play tonight. He's yeah. been nicked up a little bit. He's missed the last few games, but. He can shoot the ball. He doesn't make a lot of mistakes, and uh, hey, he's just a great teammate. Everybody, everybody likes him. Uh, so, you know, when you got all those attributes, uh, you ended up, you end up having a pretty good career in this league. How about uh, you know Caleb Swanigan? He gets traded, I believe, yesterday to the Kings, and I don't. Again, I don't know if you got, and I looked at your schedule. You guys have not crossed paths. I don't think since you've been back, but. Uh, what do you know about? Uh, obviously, you've seen him play at, at Purdue and, and seen him around the league a little bit. But what do you think about uh, Caleb Biggie Swanigan and, and what he needs to do to get to earn time in this league? In your view? Yeah, obviously, I know his whole story. Uh, Roosevelt Barnes played yeah. on my team at, at Purdue, so uh, he, he needed a change in scenery. Um, they were pretty stacked and loaded at his position in Portland. Um, I think he was drafted the same year as Zach Collins out of uh, out of Gonzaga, who, who's a very good player as well. So uh, Sacramento's an up and coming team. So if he can uh, if he can find, you know, they have some pretty good big guys ahead of him too. Uh, Bagley was drafted last year by him very high, uh, but if he can find a way to get on the court, uh, he can pass the ball very well. Uh, and that's a that's a team that's kind of on the rise right now, Sacramento. So. It's probably a, a better fit for him to get, to get there. So, um, you know, hopefully he'll he'll be able to get some time now. All right, guys, I want you to run. And Jerry, unfortunately, can't see this, but we have some classic video of uh, your playing days. Uh, I mean, you guys running up and down the court, and I think they have a chance to to, to run it here when this was used uh, when you were inducted into the Purdue Hall of Fame. But, you know, you want just working players, uh, hard-nosed players. There never was anybody tougher than Jerry Seesting when he played at Purdue, when you played at Purdue. But... You know, now looking back at the lens of a of a a, a good period of time since you've played, uh, what was that Purdue experience like for you? I mean, you you played for played for a couple of different coaches, different styles, but uh, played with some great people and some great players. Well, I, I had a, number one. I had a great time in college, on the on the court and off the court. I, I loved uh, being at Purdue, and I met a lot of great people. A lot of people I still stay in touch with. Uh, you know, and I'm actually. You know, um, got some side business uh, ventures with a few people, including uh, Brian Walker, yeah. my uh, my old teammate who's a lawyer now in Lafayette. Uh, Neil Beeman Durfer is a lawyer in uh, in uh, Indianapolis, and I just saw him right before I took this job out, out in California. Played golf with him, so um, you know, just just being at Purdue, graduating from Purdue uh, was fantastic, uh, and my, my best memories my senior year. When you know, we lost a lot of starters. It's very, actually, it's very uh, similar to the team they have this year. Yeah. Uh, not, not a lot of people uh, expected a whole lot from them. It's going to be kind of a rebuilding situation. But Joe Barry and I were really the only guys coming back that played much um, from the year before. And we were, the Big Ten was loaded then, and we were picked to be ninth in the, in the preseason, uh, you know, coaches poll or whatever. We were ninth, and we ended up uh, tying for the Big Ten championship. So there's... That and Lee Rose had, had come that year, um, and he was only at Purdue two years, but he won a Big Ten championship uh, in '79, and then he went to the Final Four in '80. And he really, even though I only had him one year, uh, Lee Rose probably had more of an impact uh, on me than any coach I ever had. So uh, yeah. you know, all the, all those memories, um, you know, were, were fantastic. Uh, 
you know, at the end of the year, you, you know, we kind of got the shaft uh, yeah. as far as going to the Big Ten championship. But we, we lost our first two Big Ten games because we won the Rainbow Classic in Hawaii. We came, uh, there was a big blizzard, uh, yeah. and we got stuck in Hawaii for about three days. So when we came back with the jet lag and uh, barely got to Columbus to play on the road against Ohio State and then played Indiana two days later at noon, uh, we lost both those games and started out 0-2 and, and ended up tying for the championship. So, um, you know, I, we won we won something like 17 of our last 20 games, uh, you know, including the Big Ten in those first few games of the NIT. So we were we were playing as good as anybody in the country and didn't get to go to the NCAA. And then the next year, of course, they they changed the rules and allow more than two teams to get in uh, to the tournament. So yeah, and of course that, that's that, the way it goes. Sometimes. Yeah, that but is I, the way my, it goes. My that that year was fantastic. Yeah, that team went to, uh, the year after you graduated uh, went to the Final Four. Uh, you know, you had that uh, experience of playing with a guy like Eugene Parker, too, uh, one of the great uh, individuals who's, who passed away uh, two or three years ago. But uh, uh, tell us about that experience. You know, you played played in the same backcourt with him for, for at least a, it would have been with three of your four years uh, at Purdue. But uh, tell us what kind of guy that Gene was with and, and the opportunity to play with him and, and your professional relationship. I assume you st still stayed in touch after after you guys had played some. Yeah, well, Eugene and I, were, were we actually lived together uh, yeah. in the summer one year at Purdue when we were both uh, taking some summer school classes. So, yeah, I was close with Eugene. Um, and actually, my freshman year, we had uh, Bruce Parkinson was there, a great player, uh, very, very good all-Big Ten player. And Kyle Macy was there my freshman year. We ended up playing in the NBA. So we had we actually had too many guards uh, there for a while. But um, it was it was great competition. It obviously, made me a lot better player playing against those guys every single day. And, and Eugene ended up being maybe the most powerful agent in the NFL. Uh, it's kind of funny being a basketball player that yeah. – uh, he, uh, he ended up finding his way to where he was representing, you know, all pro Hall of Fame type uh, football players. And, you know, one, one of the more moving experiences I've had in several years, maybe in my whole life, was uh, going to, um, to Eugene's funeral and listen to the guys get up and talk about him. It was uh, very, very touching, very moving on, on uh, how he impacted so many so many athletes and just everyday people in the city of Fort Wayne. Uh, he was just an icon in that city. Well, Jerry Seesting is an icon in the city of Martinsville and a Indiana, a Purdue basketball legend, a state of Indiana basketball legend. And Jerry, it's great to see that you're you're doing well. And I, for selfishly or at least for you, I hope you also get back out to Arizona soon and uh, after the season's over and get back to enjoying. A, I know you're not ready to retire yet. Uh, you've got a lot of basketball in you, but uh, that's also a, a great thing that you got picked up and had this opportunity up at Minnesota. So thanks again. I know it's a game day. I'm back and seeing uh, some boiler basketball games in the Big Ten, but that's not happening this this year, unfortunately. But I'll keep following them. So yeah, I don't know what it, maybe it's some NCAA tournament uh, opportunities too that uh, Purdue will be up in your neighborhood. But going to be an interesting rest of the season. Hey Jerry, thanks so much for your time. Good luck tonight. Good luck uh, uh, piecing that team together. I'll be uh, trying to pay attention to see how uh, how you guys fare tonight. Uh, but uh, thanks again for your time. All right, thanks for having me. Thanks All right, uh, we will take a couple of minute break and bring in bring in dr will miller take a little bit of a comedic comedic sports uh uh bent uh, as we look at uh, some big opportunities and big things going on in dr will's life he's been a guest of the show almost every year that we've done it so we'll take a two minute break we'll be back on golden black live 